Welcome back folks to another episode of Firewood Doctor. Today I'm going to be working on the little bit of cherry that I have down in this end. Uh, if I hit another round that isn't cherry, well it's going to just get chucked into the front of the bed. So I may have a, a maple or two hidden in there. So I'll definitely know as soon as I split it open. Uh, that wood's going to dry fast so I, I'm not going to have a problem selling that. Uh, this year, maybe in a couple of couple of months, it'll be ready. So, the hickory that I finished up in the last video that that's going to take a while to dry, even as small as I was splitting it. So, the wolf ridge is all warmed up. I just cracked my neck <laughs> trying to flick my hair out of the way. Eh, I don't have the talent to flick my hair out of the way yet. So, anyway, let's. Get the splitter fired up and get the rounds on the log lift and get splitting.
Oh, the dinner bell is ringing, otherwise I'd keep on splitting. So I'm gonna put the chair right here. I gotta make enough room so I can uh, get at the full length of the pile. I was, I can't drive through, so I'm gonna make enough room so I can at least get the wheelbarrow through. I'm not gonna have much hickory. I'm gonna have probably about four times the cherry. So let's see. This pallet is a no. Let's see, I'll use this one. Oh. Get this out of the way. I was just talking to my YouTube friend Daniel Atkins uh, in texting. I said something about my splitter being a thirsty girl, but it's like nothing compared to his. His uh, 35 SHO burns like a gallon and a half an hour. My splitter isn't far behind. I don't see that lasting long. Put that in the mixed hardwood. I'll put my driving lane right here. So I just need enough room to get in between so I can stack there. This stuff's going to dry so fast. At least I can bet. Yeah, it's taken a long time to get splitting done, but at least it's to the size I want. So that's what takes a while splitting like that is going for the small wood. The box wedge and a conveyor is the way to go, but I don't have $7,500 for a matching conveyor. And I get a color matched conveyor to my splinter. No question about that. I'd have a color matched. You little turkey. Yeah, fix you put you right here. There, how's that? Yeah, a lot of uh, the fuel consumption comes from the time I spend uh, moving splits to be resplit, pulling it over the wedge. Uh, if I was doing regular firewood, I would just. Uh, I'd be splitting it a little bigger. And that would save fuel. Letting the wood fall onto the ground will save even more fuel in the splitter because then I don't have the time, waste the time to uh, walk to the other end of the splitter, even though the auto cycle is working now. Basically, the auto cycle is perfect. And splitting with the auto cycle working saves fuel. 
quite a bit of fuel, but uh, it's still a fuel hog. Yeah, my old splitter was easy on fuel per hour, but it didn't get a lot of wood done. This splitter, if I let it fall into the ground, will do, uh, especially with the 12 wood wedge, it'll do three times the amount of wood for the same amount of fuel. But when running the four way and doing it like this, It might actually burn more fuel. I don't know, I can't test that theory since I don't have that splitter anymore. That being said, I really miss the old splitter. I like to go back and use it once in a while, you know, for fun. But then that's one more engine to maintain. And my wood yard uh, landlord asked me how in the heck I moved that splitter because he had to move it to uh, get a camper out. He got that wheel caught in a, a dip. He could not move it. <laughs> so I said, I just push it around. But then it's, yeah, when it hits a dip, it's a pain in the butt. But then I said, when I go park it, under the uh, loafing shed or three-sided pole barn said I used the tow bar and he was like oh that makes sense after he mentioned it uh, he said yeah that makes sense so I said uh, yeah the tow bar is removable so a decent amount of cherry and it was only a few rounds. I wouldn't doubt it that this right here be at least a hundred bucks of firewood. You know, it isn't the uh, time and fuel spent to do the job. It's what you're gonna get as an end result for doing the job. Like uh, bundle wood or bags, you know, if I sell it as uh, cooking wood, 10 bucks a bag. Probably easily 10 bucks here. When I finish putting this hickory on there, it could be 300 bucks of firewood. So not too bad for uh, spending, uh, you know, seven hours out in the wood yard to do split, then go deliver that load, then dink around doing the small stuff. Think you're on doing the small stuff can make you a lot of money in a hurry once it sells. So don't let people get you down when you're splitting small stuff. Some of these I should have re-split. Don't let people get you down for splitting small wood, as long as you know you're splitting small for a purpose. Like for uh, if you're splitting small for bundle wood and stuff, you're going to be laughing all the way to the bank, whereas the uh, other people that are splitting bigger, we need the camera here. People that are splitting bigger are usually doing it for heating wood. So they don't think about 
the uh, bundles. Or they're just teasing him when you say, yeah, you're making toothpicks. Now, if I were to make these into barbecue chips, like Ohio Woodburner does with some of his wood, a new venture of his, this could be a couple of grand worth of firewood. The more you refine a product, the raw materials, the more money you get for it. Like iron ore, you refine that, and then you uh, make steel out of it, you're gonna get more money. Then, make it into car body panels and stuff, make even more money. Or you make some other type of equipment, you know, like a log splitter or something. You, know, you could take a thousand bucks of steel, which is quite a bit in a hobby shop, you could turn that into 20 grand a product, you know, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I got the, uh, the wind is picked up. Good thing I put the tripod in a protected area. This wood yard is going to be really good for drying, I think. Even better than the old one. Some people think I screwed myself over by getting kicked out of the old one, but it is what it is. At least here, I don't have to do any more improvements for clearing the, uh, expanding the wood yard and all that. I estimate with the room I have now available along the building, where the landlord said I could put wood, I could probably have 200 cords of logs here, no problem. processing and storing it that's the issue you may not be able to do 200 cords of finished product but with a product like a uh, cherry maple and stuff that stuff dries fast so I could turn that inventory over fast same for pine got some free wood to go get. Yes, they will cut the log. I'm guessing that's at least two face cords in that one log. It's at least 12 foot. It's so big. I'm guessing uh, just a few rounds. Well, it's at least 12 foot. So I figured uh, Six rounds at the size of it. Six rounds would fill this truck up for weight. Maybe seven or eight, depending on how heavy it actually is when I go cut it, because some of those logs could hold moisture until the All right. 
that's it for this episode of Fire Doctor. So until next time, folks, take care, get out there, do something, have fun doing it. I think pizza and a beer sounds pretty good. What do you folks think? Let me know in the comments below if that sounds like a good idea at the end of a weekend of uh, working hard and stuff. Pizza and a beer. Or burger and a beer. <laughs>